Hi everyone, I'm here at uh, London, Ontario. As you can see, it's winter and behind me are hives. Uh, I'm learning all about bees and how they survive in the winter. What do they eat? And to tell us all about it uh, is, I'm gonna talk to Anna Chernyshova. She's a master's student at uh, Dr. Thompson's lab here at Western University. So let's learn about bees. So the bees are inside. The bees are inside <coughs> while we're wintering and usually don't get opened until springtime. So they are hibernating? They are hibernating, yeah. But this winter has not been too bad, so they should be, they should be alive. But you can see here though, some of them died, you know, from the cold. So it's usually whichever ones make it. But their main job is to preserve the queen so she can reproduce when it gets warm. Mm. How many bees are inside of each one? Oh, that's a good question, but they vary. They vary depending on uh, queen productivity, but I would say thousands and thousands, maybe 10,000 at least. So you need, you normally you need a higher still yeah, to do this. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Ooh. Well, then, yeah, wow, so, they're alive. So you can see that they usually cluster together mm -hmm. and they're trying to maintain heat. Wow. Like they're trying to maintain heat and most likely there is a queen somewhere there. So that's, that's how they overwinter. Wow, if you close them, they will not die. No. Are you going to crush them? No. no. There they go. In. Wow. Yeah. So that's how they uh, all winter, that's what they do. And then when the springtime comes, they start... Uh, and they feed on honey over winter as a resource. So they eat honey to survive? Yeah. That's crazy that they're alive in there. Yeah. And sometimes they can withstand, depending on the type of bees, they can withstand like the temperature is minus 50. Wow. That's okay, it's just they're not properly, but that's fine. And inside inside this one is another one? Um, so there's two boxes, yeah, so that means that means uh, there are two frames. Um, so if you remember mm -hmm. how you opened that, yeah. you saw that the, there's like stacked up frames. Uh -huh. So usually when the hive gets big, you keep increasing the number of boxes. So you can have, that's why those hives, if you look, they have three, right? So those hives have m more number of bees. With them. Mm. These ones have two. And sometimes what they do is the lower one gets used for honey collection. So they will put a metal mesh through which the queen cannot fall through and she cannot lay eggs. So then the workers, the workers can go through it and the workers end up storing uh, honey in here. So that when you collect honey, you only grab this box mm -hmm. and it's filled with honey. And then mm -hmm. you spin everything and you get, get the honey. So each, each of these boxes is a separate colony of bees. Right. So each of these, uh, each of these boxes has one queen and her workers. Okay. So if I, I can lift this right now up. Yeah. This whole thing and there's going to be a layer. Um, in this case, we didn't put it because we just do, we're just using these hives for research. So we don't we're not really interested in creating a lot of honey. We, we want to just increase the number of bees. But if you are doing it for honey production, then yes, you will put uh, metal mm -hmm. metal mesh so that the queen cannot go through there to lay the eggs because she lays the eggs randomly on the frames. She just kind of walks around and lays the eggs, right? So in this case, if you lift this, you will not see the metal mesh. But in those ones, because those those hives are designed for honey production, so those hives, if you lift it, the top two boxes, for example, and you look at the orange one, mm -hmm. it will be filled with honey. Usually by the end of the summer season. Right now it's empty because all the honey has been collected. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so it looks like this, right? This is an empty one. Mm -hmm. So this is how you would start. You have 10 of these frames. 
And then this is exactly the same thing, but if you put the metal thing, then the, the queen, who is bigger in size, cannot go in to lay the eggs in each one of these. So then the workers end up filling these ones. This is honeycomb. With honey. Yeah, this is... This is in each one she can lay an egg? Yeah, but they have to... This is just like... Uh, this is empty, so it hasn't even started yet. Mm -hmm. Right? But the one... Here, if I look at this one... Mm, it's okay, it's okay. No, for example, right? I look at this one. This is scary because it's live. <gasps> okay, and right now they're also pissed because, like, yeah, it's probably not a good idea. Probably. Okay. Close it, close they, it, close they it. sounded pretty cheese. Yeah, they're pretty mad, so it's probably not a good idea to. Uh... Did he die right there? Yeah. Okay, let's close it. Yeah, they're, they're usually angry in the winter time. Because uh, it's cold. <laughs> wow. So they don't like to be disturbed. And you can see that some of these bees are like more aggressive than others, right? So that one already froze. That's it. Sinking himself into the ground. Yeah. So um, actually, cold acts as anesthetic for them. So when they are cold, they're they're just like fall asleep, and then they basically die. That's it, he's not flying anymore. Huh? But it's good that to quick. see that... That was so fast. It's good to see that it's cold when it, like, they cannot take the cold, it makes them sleepy. It acts as an aesthetic for them. So if you take this bee now and you put it in a warm place, it will wake up. So, so when they're you... still like all together, they keep themselves warm because they're close to each other? Yes. It's enough to survive? Yeah. It's enough to survive. They use the honey for heat. But their main role is to preserve the life, the life of the queen. So if you put them in a fridge, reproduce. if you put them in the fridge, they can hibernate there. For uh, how long? No, we put them in the fridge, and then they they become sleepy. For how long can they do that until you? So wake you can them put up? them in the fridge for about ten minutes, and then uh, this is what we do. It's like acts as a local anesthetic. So we put them in the fridge. They fall asleep. They start moving less. Then you take them out under microscope. Do all the stuff. <laughs> and then it wakes up? Then they wake up. But how long can it be in the fridge until it dies and not wake up again? For example. Uh, it I depends believe. on the bee. So it does happen where like if you leave it for 20 minutes, some bees will die. Some mm. bees will uh, come back. So 20 minutes pretty much. So 20 minutes I would say is like threshold, like max. Yeah. That's cool. Like in the real situation, if it is like in the snow right now, it will die. It will die. Yeah. yeah. Unless, Unless you it take it, you, you can it take this bee right now. Why it's so Shaz, it. yes, if we take it and put it in your pocket, it will wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. You're down to put it in your pocket? Or like in your hands like this? Yeah, you can oh. warm it up. It will, it, right now, like within the 20 minutes, you have a chance of rescuing it. But it's also like not really a point because that bee particular cannot reproduce. Yeah. So it's kind of like, okay. So and a the, lot of them do die over winter. During the winter times, they don't put the locks anymore on the bee production base. What do you mean locks? That one has a lock. Because That's not a lock. Like, oh, just to keep it together no, from the wind? Just, yeah, so the wind. Sometimes they will put like a brick on top just to add some extra weight. Mm -hmm. But those, it's, this is just a preference. It's just the style of a beekeeper. Um, they just tie it together. So if it's windy. The, the top especially, which is the light, lighter one. Mm -hmm. The top is the lightest one. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if it's really it windy, you don't away. want it yeah, to fly off. But amazingly enough, like every single one of these colonies, it's a different type of uh, colony. So it's it, they all have different queen, but like, but all of the bees know exactly to which one to fly, come back. Mm. Like which one is theirs. Yeah. So. That's pretty amazing. Like they know how to come back to their own hive. Wow. This, so these uh, bees are Australian stock, these, oh. these ones. And these ones, they're, they're from Chile. So they're Chilean. So, so Chile more chill? But why here? More chill uh, than two, Australian. Two boxes, there is three boxes. Because it means there's a bigger hive. Or like I mentioned earlier, these ones, they're, they're from a different beekeeper. So these hives are designed for honey production. So the bottom box has the metal mesh. So Rick, 
actually Rick who is the beekeeper of these ones he he actually uh, takes the bottom to process it and make honey so that's why but so it could be for two reasons one it's because it's focused on honey production or two it's because the hive is bigger and in this case it's both like these Australian colonies seem to be very strong and their, their hives are bigger and they seem to be more active too <laughs> And usually, sure, if, you, if you look on the top of the board, right? Mm -hmm. If you look on top of the board, you can see that there are some notes. Yeah, what do they mean? And so the notes are usually the last time somebody inspected these uh, colonies or, you know, took a look at them or something like that. Mm. So sometimes it's harder to open these ones because of, uh, there's a lot of pro like sticky substance, so it's propolis. They use it to seal the gaps. What is it? They're inside. They they are dead. Yeah, no. it, it's it's possible that some of them die. This one is alive. One. You can try to like. Uh, is there one on top alive? No. No, that one on top looks alive. Подожди, подожди. There's a sound. The sound is like they're keeping warm for us. There is a sound. Yeah. There is a sound. <laughs> that is like a pro already. Yeah, so they oh. are there. Do you see yeah. it? They're here oh in, the, in the cluster. God. Oh. So there they are. Yeah, so, so that's a honeycomb. Do you remember the blank one? That oh, they're saw? coming out. Yeah. yeah. Okay, close it, close it. Wow. So that's the honeycomb that is already made by, mm -hmm. the, by the bees, because they mm -hmm. use wax. Yeah. But this, you can you can tell that there is a lot of honey mm -hmm. in uh, the, the one that, that uh, mm -hmm. Mike lifted. Break for a weight? Yeah, so this one, see there's no belt. But they use the brick to hold it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're doing well. They're still alive. This winter hasn't been bad though. Mm -hmm. If it's really cold, they can die. The whole colony? Yeah. Uh, the winter of 2017 was the worst. And a lot of beekeepers lost a lot of hives. Like just, the bees just froze to death and died. So wh what happens in the spring? Do you have to start from scratch? If where they do die, they get? Then yeah. But where do you get queen bees? You can either buy them. There are people who breed queen. From other countries, you bring it here. You can bring it from other countries. You can buy it. Actually, each queen, queen is basically the colony. Mm -hmm. So each queen can be quite expensive, depending. How much? Like ranging from five hundred to two thousand dollars for each one, depending on the stock. Yeah. Wow. How do you make another queen? Uh, it's a. You can either you can either produce it, so it's a it's a pretty good question actually. So the difference between queen and the worker is the queen it's fed special food. It's called royal jelly when it's when it's young. So if you take the worker bee and you take the queen bee to the worker, they just they just feel nor uh, they just feed normal uh, pollen. Mm -hmm. But to the queen, they give her also royal jelly. And this substance allows her to develop and become bigger in size, develop ovaries and be able to reproduce. However, the workers only do it if their queen, current queen is not performing well, like she's not laying eggs or she's lazy or the workers don't like her mm -hmm. for some reason. Um, or because the queen is becoming old because usually after two years, the queen dies depending but usually right so if the queen dies then the workers start making new queen cells which which actually look different in shape they're they're much bigger and then they feed her royal jelly and they they will make a couple of these so they will make a couple of queen cells and the first one that emerges has to basically kill all the other ones before she becomes the queen mm -hmm. and if you know for example but if during this process them emerge, you separate them separate them where like you separate them yeah, and you both can survive the queen and sell it yeah mm -hmm. sure 
but you have to that's know that's how people produce it like yeah uh, and uh, for example my friend and lab lab mate uh, andrew he's a beekeeper but he also got into queen production so he produces uh, uh queens and he sells them mm -hmm. very interesting and you can also create uh specific queens for example you can take the sperm from the hives Mm -hmm. uh, from the drones that are, for example, like, uh, have been shown to have high immunity system or, or, or better at specific uh, uh, trait. So then uh, what people do is they artificially inseminate to produce, uh, to produce the super queen with all these super genetic qualities. Because, mm -hmm. for example, like Australian bees are different mm -hmm. right, in terms of performance. Some bees are better at producing honey. Others are better at uh, defending uh, against pathogens or, or bacteria or whatever, right? So there's no such thing right now as a perfect bee, but it's kind of one thing that people work on. Try, try to create like a perfect colony that it will be good at honey production, will be immune to all the diseases, will have good pollinators and all these things, but it's very hard to do. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the things that people are working on. Okay. Especially given the the problem of colony collapse disorder mm -hmm. we're having now. Okay. Thank you, you for this. Where is this home? My pleasure. Thank you for this <laughs> lesson. <laughs>